have occurred in the outcome of a couple of unique petitions in New Burbank. Brotherly love, conspicuous by its absence. This is a spat between Jacob Fox and his unnamed brother, who we think might be JW. It involved a stolen idea for a street sign pattern. The brothers are described as deadly enemies who hate one another. And the father, JW Sr., is cited as a poor but respected inventor of the famous Fox steam plant. Another fact I haven't been able to find. <laughs> now, here's, you can see we're starting to get the column space now, and the media boys in the Los Angeles Times have warmed up to this story. 1895, more column space. Fox Family Feud aired in Justice Young's Court. Next slide. What's happening here is uh, J.W. Fox Sr., he's an old man at this time, 1895. He's over 72. No offense to anything. He appeared to have six sons and a daughter. Four sons and a daughter were on his side, the others were not. So we've got this family break up here, okay? David B. Fox Jr. is described as being the black sheep of the family. Why? Well, what sort of a son makes his dope near his mother's window and chants, dynamite, blow you up tonight? <laughs> Honest to goodness, that was I'm not making this up. And his mother was in the window and he didn't know that. He's hearing him saying this. Or he did know that, and he's putting out a little pantomime for her benefit. We don't know. The neighbors are incensed. Burbankers discuss tar and feathers. <laughs> Getting serious. Getting serious. Here we go, 1896. J.W. Fox Sr. issues a search warrant against his son. It has to do with 325 feet of iron pipe, and Dad says, stay off my property. Here we go, 1898. Uh, Summoning up the language of the mighty American Civil War, a house divided itself against itself cannot stand. Uh, now J.B. Jr. and H.D. Fox are in court against each other. These are different members of the same family, right? Former allies against the father. This has to do with a $10 larceny case involving lumber. J.B. Jr. charged that H.D. tore down a barn, destroyed a hen house, demolished a pig pen. <laughs> pig pen, I'm sorry. Now here's, now, here's where it really begins to end. You can just imagine in the LA Times uh, editorial rooms, oh boy, what's happening in Burbank now with the Mons family? An infernal machine, 1898. Next slide. What's in that one is an infernal machine, otherwise known as a bomb. Now we're getting serious. Now remember, three years prior, J.W. Fox sung about dynamiting his parents. He built a light walking stable within inches of his mother's kitchen. So he built a spiked stable. His poor mom is sitting there trying to do the dishes. Her son builds this enormous stable against the window, blocking the light. The angry neighbors, the neighbors are getting upset at the way this, this young man's treating his parents. They mounted the offending, offending stable on skids and moved it, then burned it down. <laughs> J.W. Jr. then, he built a shanty near his parents' home, and he ran wires to the shanty. And his mother heard, it must be arranged to blow the old man up first. And I want to scatter their bones all over the orchard. you believe this? Uh, the father investigated and saw a 12-inch high, 8-inch diameter device with wires leading to it. Oh, infernal device. He complained to the police, who took J.R. Jr. under custody, $1,000 bail. And here we go again, that infernal machine. This is part two. Uh, this is from 1898. That infernal machine. Everybody knows about it. You don't have to explain it anymore. Our readers know about it. It's been amusing to everyone save those involved. Why? Because the bomb was a brown paper wrapped tin can filled with sand. Those wires that went to the shanty, those are clothesline wires. And J.W. Jr. said, oh, it was a ruse to keep people from tearing down my shanty. I'm not going to blow up my parents, not me, aren't I? So, it continues. End of the Fox Gunflower plot part. You like that Fox Gunflower powder? You know, he tried to blow up Parliament, a guy named Fox. 1898, uh, Guy Fox. The district attorney was criticized for involving the courts. Do we detect a hint of sorrow on the part of the Los Angeles Times reporters? Oh, you know, no more bomb stories to write about. But there's more. In 1898, the carpenter of the bomb shanty wants money from J.R. Sr. for false arrest. He got arrested. 1898, T.W. Fox, now this is yet another Fox family member, and H.B. Fox 
They, uh, they got into problems over a matter of board signature in 1899. It's J.R.W. Sr. versus J.W. Jr. over a barrel of how appropriate vinegar. After this, the Fox family follies end, but have we heard the last of J.W. Fox? Mike, you got it. And here we go with Consolidation Joe. He wants to get rid of, he has a ballot issue in Burbank to annex uh, Burbank back to the city of L.A. And this was September 16, 1920. He doesn't give up in this. He just wants everybody, but bottom line is, here we are. David A. Fox is the main proponent of a plan to annex Burbank back to Los Angeles. He formed the Burbank Consolidation League. Remember those? He had that little trap right. out there on the flags and everything. Reasons cited. Cheaper light, gas, and water, lower taxes, and better schools. Anyway, <laughs> uh, well, you know, those are the very things that we said <laughs> that always you hear about. changes, doesn't yeah. it? Anyway, soon addition bonuses, though. No, we didn't. And all bonuses were not going to be Bonuses, no bonuses. No bonuses. Okay. Um, sewage issues dealing with the coming of the Moreland truck factory and the shipping of fruit. I've always wondered about the shipping of fruit part. Anyway, said that 90% of registered voters were in favor of it. There he is. He's, Shoot if you must this old gray head, but spare your country flag, she said. Barbara Chandler. Why is a John Greenleaf Whittier quote from the Civil War on J.W. Fox's outdoor office? I don't know. Uh, uh, let's see. We went Burbank's yeah, bloodiest battle. battle. Burbank's bloodiest battle at Turkey Crossing. At Turkey Crossing, <laughs> which we've introduced you to. Speeches for and against annexation, Fox described as a poet, inventor. Oh, you want tonight. To, <laughs> to take part. Aluminum plant nearby, barbecue dinner served on aluminum plates. <laughs> Added incentive. If annexation occurs, Fox will run his aerial railway line to the Pacific Electric Station. So only Burbank could have the bloodiest battle served with barbecue meals on the <laughs> at a place at a place called Turkey Crossing. Was it barbecue turkey? I don't know. And it, Fox writes the LA Times on 29th of May, 1922. Cheap electricity, plenty of water, reduced school taxes, improved transportation, no sewer line. No sewer lines? Mm -hmm. okay. Sounds like things would not be healthy around here. <laughs> anyway, a glowing example, Hollywood. Because <laughs> I never understood that. And he, no, he is the president of the Burbank Consolidation. Anyway, on the 25th of September, 1924, the Annexation Medal is... So it's been going on for four years. Fox is acquitted of desecrating the flag. Used flag for advertising. <laughs> One of those flags that... Um, yeah. Another note I saw in a, a council minutes from this time period was is that Mr. Fox was ordered to put the street back the way he found it. Apparently he dug up the corner of Flower and Olive and uh, just left a big hole there for people not to drive their wagons over. And June 1925, then it says she questioned and finally comes up for a vote on June 30th. After five years. On July 3rd, 1925, it failed. All that work. Um, J.W. was mortified. Two teens are shot at the Fox Ranch. They went down to his house and burned an effigy down there, and uh, he blasted it with a shotgun. No, 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 no. They threw flares. Oh, the flares. I'm sorry. He came out. Got, well, we don't know it was him. <laughs> Somebody came out with a shotgun, and uh, they peppered these boys with bird shot. Unknown shooter. Fox said, oh, wasn't me. It was mine. I, I don't know who did that. It was in my front yard, though. <laughs> and there was a bonfire celebration on San Fernando Road after the vote, and then Fox was burned in effigy. Here lies the body of Consolidation Joe. So we had that big party last night, back in 1925. The Burbankers were burning poor J.W. Fox in effigy for daring to try to put us back to Los Angeles. On July 20th, uh, 1922, letter to the LA Times, J.W. attempts to claim the populace is down about the reports of a rabid dog. <laughs> 1,000 Lloyd's insurance policy. Rabid dogs. Yes. And here at Burbank, rabid dogs. Imagine that. Uh, born in 1862 in Pennsylvania, died in 1928. Uh, he was married to Emma C. Fox. So we conclude the story of J.W. Fox. <laughs> In 1912, six months after February, J.W. Fox appeared before the Burbank Board of Trustees, filed a petition and requesting that special election be called 
For the purpose of voting, question not the discrimination. Or not I'm disincorporating. The city of Burbank. Undoing the incorporation. In February 1912, the attorney found that there weren't enough votes and the matter died. Then in 1920, he tried to annex Burbank to that to Los Angeles. In 1925, came up for vote and failed again. If J.W. Fox had gotten his way, we wouldn't be here today. <laughs> Bring the Burbank 100. Okay, uh, I think I'll do this. Cool. James Jackson Jeffries. Everybody knows James Jackson Jeffries. Fire, right? Next slide. Look at the physique on this guy, ladies. I wish I looked like that. And this is like 100 years ago. I mean, this guy was buff. 1875 to 1953, he was a world heavyweight champion in 1899 and 1905. Six foot one and a half inches, 225 pounds. He was a giant in his time. Enormously strong, he could absorb great punishment during a bout. He could run 100 yards in just over 10 seconds, and he could high jump over six feet. Yeah, just in perspective, the average uh, person in fighting World War II was five feet tall. So that's that's some guy standing here in his BBD. Total fights, 23. What kind of a career do you have? Wins, 19. Wins by knockout, 14. Losses, one. Draws, two. No contest, one. Record for quickest knockout in a heavyweight heavyweight title fight ever, 55 seconds. This is not a man you want to meet in a ring. He moved to Burbank in 1904. He bought 107 acres on Victory Boulevard in Buena Vista. My guess is some of you here may remember the Fox Ranch, maybe, and the... Jeffrey's Farm. And the, uh, what did I say? Fox Ranch? I mean, the, I meant the Jeffrey. His barn became a popular spot for boxing and also films. Uh, if you've ever seen the John Garfield film, 1939, with the Dead End Kids, they made me a criminal. Had that final uh, fight with Stone in there. He later became, and this is generally not appreciated, he became one of the U.S. foremost suppliers of thoroughbred bulls. And his barn can still be seen in Hollywood. Uh, not a very long. There it is. There's a nice shot of the from the street across there. By the way, this is right where Ralph's is on Buena Vista and Victory. His house was across the street. Right. It straddled Buena Vista. This is one of his actual boxing. He held so many boxing and wrestling events at his property there on, in Jeffrey's Barn. He had a, publish, a publication called The Barn News. He also had The Valley Boxing News. <coughs> Here's James Jeffries. Notice anybody else in there? You got Debbie Reynolds down there in the corner and Shirley Temple up there. And an the unknown table. pretty blonde. And this poor girl. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Sir? I think we probably see that photo there. We have that chair. Cherry's <laughs> You own that chair? Yes. Excellent. That is awesome. <laughs> we need a picture of that. He does look like Robert Crawford. You're absolutely right. And my husband plays Santa Claus, too. Did you really? Yeah, Here's one of my favorite mysteries. Uh, this was placed on uh, the corner of what they now call the Landmark Shopping Center down there on Buena Vista and Victory. And this was sent into the concrete, as you can see, on his birthday in 1950. Um, one of the sad things is, is when they built that, the plaque disappeared. Aww. Here are mourners paying their respects at his funeral in the house that was where the Landmark Center is. And here is shots currently of uh, the barn itself at Knott's Berry Park. It was moved there um, somewhere we feel in the early, late 1950s. And uh, if you go inside there, if you've ever been in the Wilderness Dance Hall down there, it's still set up in the same configuration with a center-type boxing ring, which they now use as a dance floor. Burbank's notable buildings. Here we are. Here is City Hall in 1940 under construction. Groundbreaking 1941. Construction finished in 1940, well, completion was 1943. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. I love those trucks. And here's a couple of other shots of it. If you were here for the thing last night. This is one of my favorite guys in all history of Burbank around here, Paul E. Wolf. He was the official city photographer for Burbank. We have no idea how many pictures he shot, but he had this postcard series. As you can see, this one's numbered 18. I have no idea, but they, we've seen them as high as 150, but there's no one who has a full collection of all of his shots. That we know. That we know of. 